Hello everybody, my name is Steel Smith. I'll be starting a new channel called Steel's Rod and Customs. Um, it's going to be a vlog. We're going to be doing uh, downloads probably to start with maybe once a week, maybe twice a week, depending on how much I get done. We're going to be doing it in concert with my Steel, Steel Dreams channel, S-T-E-E-L-E -E -E, Dreams, where we do mostly YouTube builds. On here, I'll have, we're going to be going over customer bills daily, and this is mostly to keep my customers up to date on what's going on with their, their, <clears throat> their individual projects. Uh, a little bit about me, <clears throat> I'm a former Marine, I, um, a, I was a helicopter mechanic in the Marine Corps for four years, I will be 60 years old on Veterans Day, November, um, today is October 26th. 2022. Um, anyway, I kind of want to show everybody what it's like in a real shop. Uh, I've been doing this for 37 years. I've been here for 30 years and uh, I have a real good customer base and we do all kinds of different stuff. A lot of uh, show paint, um, a lot of, of uh, uh, metal work, metal repair, rust repair, general stuff. We do uh, some restorations. Um, so each day, as the day goes on, I'll be videoing what each guy is doing. Currently, I have uh, five employees. Um, four of them are skilled. One of them is a float around. So I have a full-time metal man, Mark, and I have a assembler slash body man. That's Danny. I have Dave. He is the... Uh, basically a shop manager and he does paint and he does body and he does some assembly and some of the little more difficult things as far as assembly goes. And then I have Jose who is a full-time body man. He's been with me for going on 15 years. Um, like I said, I've been here for 30 years. I live and work in Wildemar, California. We are about 25 miles south of Riverside. Um, on the, it was called the Inland Empire. Um, it is about, I don't know, 9 o'clock at night. I just got back from uh, Orange County. I went down to the truck shop, pick up some parts for a truck we were building. Uh, actually, we were just painting this truck. We're doing some rush repair. Um, it's over here. You can see over my shoulder there. That's that 58 GMC. Uh, we have currently about 14 cars in the shop. Um, that's usually about the basic number. I try to keep it a little lower than that, but we've been really, really busy lately. Um, let's see what else. Um, but like I said, I want to introduce myself and I want to kind of go over uh, the projects as they, as they stand now, okay? So that you can follow me each, as each not day, but each week at least, uh, to start with, to show you how things get pro things progress. Um, normally, we can do your basic body and paint job in about four to eight weeks. Um, the car on my shoulder here. This is a '59 Impala. This belongs to Bill down at Muscle Factory. Um, this is a pretty rusty pig, and we're going to do be doing a lot of work to it, and it's pretty beat up. But it's coming along pretty good. It's going to be red. It goes on a Art Morrison chassis with a supercharged LS. Um, it'll be pretty cool. Uh, I do a lot of um, body swaps and other builds on my other channel. So please go check it out if you get a chance. It's, uh, like I said, Steel Dreams. Steel with an E on the end. S-T-E-E-L-E. -E Okay, so uh, let's go over each project so you can kind of, this is like the baseline so you can see how things are going to progress. Um, like I said, I'll be doing, going over to do some, tut 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 bleh, some tutorials <laughs> on how to do certain things. Um, you'll see the cars uh, move through the shop. Uh, you will see no drama. Uh, this, is not, this is not Gas Monkey Garage. This is not one of those stupid shows as you guys watch on TV and you think it's reality. That isn't reality. 
Um, this is reality. My guys get here in the morning at 6 o'clock, and they work till 4.30. I come out usually around 7, and I work until 8 to 10 or 30 o'clock at night. Um, 10.30 o'clock, 10.30 at night. Um, I have to do my part, which is uh, basically uh, assessing what's been done for the day. I have to do all the priming, and uh, I do my quality checks at night, and then the next day, I manage mostly, and then I do some of the things that other guys can't do. Um, uh, I've kind of turned the shop over to the guys to do most of their work. Um, God, I got hair in my face from this. Um, because I'm trying to retire. Um, I'm trying to be able to take time off and go around and see my grandkids and do some traveling. And my other um, YouTube show, which will be a traveling... Hot Rod Show. Anyway, we'll get to that when it comes around. But for now, um, like I said, I have my guys running a shop so that could, I can do my YouTube deal, okay, my Steel Dreams, and then this I'm going to add in during the day so we can track each job for the customers so they can log on and they can take a look and see what's going on with their car or not going on. <laughs> Hopefully, a lot's going on. Um, we do have some assembly that we're doing. Like right now, there's that red buyer's over my corner, my shoulder right there. That is a uh, fiberglass car made in the 50s. Over here, you see my 50, my uh, buddy's 57 Chrysler 300C. It's pretty much almost done. Got to do some interior adjustments and uh, get the dual carburetors to, to uh, run right. Um, so I don't like doing um, restorations. I push them off as much as I can. Uh, at the end of the day, they're very expensive because they're very time-consuming. And at the end of the day, neither I or the customer seem to be happy because they had to pay a lot of money and I didn't get paid what I thought I should have. So I always end up, you know, knocking it off a little bit because I feel sorry for them. Um, if you have work you want to done and you're local, or if you're not local, whatever, I don't care, uh, give me a shout-out and we can take a look at your project. Um, I'll explain later on in the shows how I do my pricing. Um, I don't bid jobs. I do it strictly by the hour. So uh, anyway, I can guess them it, but it's all I guess. So anyway, uh, let's go over the cars. All right. So let's start over here in the corner. You'll notice that some of the cars are mine because I can. Uh, yeah, that's a little embarrassing. That is my 68 Coronet that is mounted on top of a 2013 Challenger SRT8 chassis. Yep, motor and tranny is all in it. It's basically all there. We're going to be digging it out pretty soon. That build will be on the um, Steel Dreams channel. Uh, up there you can see the 67 El Camino under the cover. We're in the middle of assembling that. In the background... Is my 67 big block El Camino. Both these are big block cars. Big block El Camino, four speed. Over here, in the corner over there, is a gray 51 Ford F1. Uh, it's got a 350 in it. It's been painted, suicide doors. And we're in the middle of assembling that. I'm waiting for the glass to come back. Over here in the cover, can't see it very well. Right there. Yep, under that cover is a 54 Chevy station wagon. Uh, we're putting LS in it. It's already been four-linked. It's got a Camaro subframe done by the previous shop. And uh, uh, we're finishing that car up. I did all the paint and the wood graining on it, and I'll show that to you coming up. Uh, here in front of us, we have oh, my face. the 58 Chevy half-ton. Uh, that we're building for Bob, or Bob's customer, and uh, it's going to be teal green. I went down this morning, like I said, and I went to a truck shop, and I got uh, uh, a new tailgate and a bed panel and the hinge, uh, the lower hinge uh, repair parts. Uh, right there's a door for the Impala. Here is uh, this is Bill's '59 Impala. <clears throat> it's going to be uh, like Honda Red. I uh, got the roof all blocked out, run, the fins are done. Um, 
doing some rust work in the back. We're getting ready to mount it on the rotisserie so we can get the bottom of it straightened out. Uh, overall, it's not too bad. It's got a little bit of rust here and there, so we're coming to weird spots. Uh, we can, you can see we already fixed the areas around the wheel tub here. There's some more with that Bondo we gotta take care of. So anyway, that's the 59 Impala. Um, um, like I said, my friend's 57 Chrysler 300C. Uh, we got it down in the body shop right now because uh, uh, we had it out. We had a good, it was almost done. Had a tarp up, like a little, you know, a little sunshade 10 by 10 deal. And the wind caught it and spun it and dropped it down on top of the car. And it chipped like and gouged the paint all over the place. So basically, we just got through repainting it from the doors back. And then we, we polished out the front. So anyway, we're back trying to get this thing out of my life. Um, it's trunk lid. There's a, a VW square back finishing up. Uh, let's see what else. So in the shop, that's basically right here. So let's go over some questions first because I know that you're going to be asking me, why is there so much stuff in this shop well because when you're working on you know 15 cars or 16 cars you have that much worth of parts laying around everything is categorized everything boxed up on the rack up there it's all the restoration parts everything is down here for the most part is all getting body work on there's a trunk lid for the for the uh for my impala the other one's somewhere around here and there's two hoods behind it as you can see the corner over there is my plasma cam, which I want to sell if you want us to buy a plasma cam. I never use it. And uh, we have here, <laughs> this is a Bronco roof that became a table. So it's a Bronco table. We'll be cleaning that off uh, probably tomorrow so that we can uh, get that finished up for the customer. Uh, over here, oh, I almost forgot. We have Stars Bronco, <clears throat> 1968 baby Bronco. Uh, I rescued it from a shop um, last week, and we are doing the rush repair on it now. Um, little spots like that, and that, all over the place. So, anyway, another one there. We gotta do one there yet. I already got one right there. So, anyway, there's a the Bronco. Uh, what we don't have down here right now is I have another Bronco, which we are on the final legs that we got to do some tuning on. And we have a 63 Ford Ranchero that we are waiting on some parts on. Uh, a lot of these restorations, that's a big problem is we, is getting parts. If we're not getting parts, we have to make parts. We have to buy used parts, we have to refabrish parts. So it's always some kind of part problem. Um, Anyway, that's what we're waiting for on the uh, Ranchero is a few parts to come in and we're going to finish that thing up. We'll see it. It's yellow and white. We'll show it to you in the future. Uh, also, we have uh, the 65 Impala <coughs> convertible. It has been painted and the customer is on a budget. So we work on it a little while and we put it back out to pasture. Right now it's in the pasture. Uh, we have a uh, <coughs> 50 or I'm sorry, a six or damn it. We have a 77 Ford crew cab, four wheel drive, F-350, pitch and truck. We're putting that together right now. It's all painted. We're just doing the assembly on it and waiting for the parts to come in from the uh, parts place. Um, Mac and LMC and whoever else we're doing it from. I think that's it for customer cars. So, um, like I said, uh, every day I'll be doing this video vlog and I'll condense it down and put them up when they're about 20 to 30 minutes a piece. And you can keep track of uh, the car you have here if you're a customer, or you can keep and watch as we do things as, as the cars progress. Some stuff doesn't get worked on right away, some stuff does. So it depends on what's going on with the, with, uh, the workload. Um, not everybody can do everything. So, uh, 
Some cars have to wait for rust repair because we only have one person that's doing rust. Well, we have two, but mostly one person. Anyway, I will see you guys later. Adios. So, over to the truck shop in Orange. Cool place. There's a sign right there. So, uh, it's a Friday, which is the worst day in the world to come. Well, no, Saturday. Worst day in the world to come here. Uh, they got, at least they got a number. You pull a number, you walk in there, pull a number. I look up, number four, pull mine, 23. So I'll be here for at least an hour. Um, Got to get parts for the 59 Chevy pickup truck we're working on. Get hinge pockets and uh, a new header and tailgate. Um, header panel for the bed. Uh, so uh, anyway, I will see you in an hour. And we will uh, be buying some parts and moving on to the next thing. Got, uh, got Danny over at the um, Muscle Factory. Uh, car selling buffing a T-Bird we did a while back. Somehow got some serious crazy water spots on it. So we're taking care of that for Bill. Anyway, so uh, see you a little bit. All right, so it's like almost two o'clock. Still here at the truck shop. I started out at number four, it's at number 16. That's the uh, nature of the business, man. Waiting for parts. All these companies are the same way. So, anyways, being here on Friday isn't helping anything either. And I came at lunchtime, so, anyways. All right, so, anyway, just checking in. I'm finally in. Getting my parts. It's been uh, a little over two hours. Here we go. Muscle factory and pick up Danny. He's been over for the last two and a half hours, color sounding and buffing that 57 T Bird. We had a T Bird for Bill about six months ago. Somehow got some really bad, uh, I think it's water spotting. Or something got sprayed on, I don't know. It didn't happen in the paint job, I know that. I've never seen anything like it before. It's mainly on the hood and it faded back, so it wasn't all over the car evenly. So, good anything we did, but you know what? He's a good customer, we took care of him anyways. So we're going back over there right now. I'm gonna pick up Danny. Gonna head up to uh, Stars and uh, pick up the motor and stuff. The rest of the parts she has for her Bronco, and then um, and then we're gonna head up to uh, the next stop. Coming up. So we're Danny finishing up the T-Bird. Go polish up. Make it pretty sweet. Let's go check out Muscle Factory. The other cars we already have. We should walk over to what we do. Put it on the ground. Huh? Put it on the ground. I'm going to see you, buddy. Put on what? On the rack? Yeah. That's good. This is that one you paint for. Yeah. About a year ago, yeah? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Looking pretty good. There's more cars we got coming in. i do that one and that one. That one and that one. We do that one too. Here's a chassis for the 59. 
Art Morrison Supercharged LT4 in it. There's a Corvette we got coming in. Let's show the ghost we did. So, anyway. Over here, we have over here. Should be all parts like crazy, bro. Right there. Yeah, baby. My Corvette. I'm trading for this. I'm getting about a third of the way there. Yep, let's see if there's any steals. Right. Trading body and paint for this thing. I did a T-Bird. I did a 63 Impala metal work on that. We're doing a 59 Impala. And I got about four more cars to go. And that car's mine. Let's see what's out here. I think, yeah, that's the Apollo I did. All the rust repair on. Did all that for the Corvette inside there. To me, the 60 Santa Corvette is the best of all Corvettes. This is, I don't know, 67 Corvette 427. Tri power, four speed, silver and black. I, I mean, it's exactly what I would want. Coupe, you know, it's not perfect. It's got scratch and dings here and there on it, but I don't give a shit. I'm gonna drive the crap out of this shit. Daily, it's gonna be my daily driver here pretty soon. Try it. Fucking A. So we gotta finish the 59 and then whatever else you want to ship over to me. And I'm trading a certain dollar amount for this one. I can let you guys know how much it is, it's a freaking lot. But uh, anyway, steals 67, 425 horse, or 435 horse, four speed, 427 Corvette. Chrysler. Trying to get this thing on. Had it ready to fire up, and uh, the fuel pump decided to take a dump on us. So we had to go find a fuel pump for a 300 seat. Luckily, Parstro was able to pull, pull one out without having to get too specialized. So, uh, I'm gonna of it. Gonna... so I'm gonna run down to the park store and grab some uh, hose clamps. We need to hook up the heater um, heater hoses. Um, proper and uh, make sure we don't have any leaking and we're going to start this turkey up and see if we can get her to tune in and then um, what else that's about it so that's my day for today we're gonna do that plus I'm going to bring the wood down for the 58 GMC and get started on staining that and uh, do the first coat of epoxy um, what else we got going on then I'm going to I don't know We'll go from there. Anyway, got to do some running around. We'll be back in a little bit. We'll make you a star.
Hey everybody, still here. So uh, we are on a Saturday, and probably around 6.30 in the evening. Been doing some running around today, handling some of these uh, you know, equipment issues so I can get this video stuff straightened out. Anyway, uh, Mark was here this morning as you see, and he did a little welding on the Bronco. Um, I am getting ready to do the wood for the um, 58 GMC we're doing. I'm going to stain it right now. So I'm going to stain it, and then I'm going to dry it, and then I'm going to... Uh, a little lunch left there. <laughs> Let it... Let it dry and cure, and then we're going to put the first coat of epoxy clear over it. So uh, we did a, just finish a bed for uh, customer um, Mike with his uh, 72 Chevy C10 or C20, 30, whatever it is. And now we're getting ready to do the same thing here because the bed comes out really bitching looking with this uh, epoxy clear. You'll see what I mean when we're done. Um, so stay tuned. And... Uh, um, if you want to see the uh, how we do this, it'll be on my other channel on uh, Steel Dreams. Check over, go over there and check it out. And we're gonna do. I'll have a complete uh, um, video on that of how we did it from start to start to finish. But uh, anyway, we're getting ready to get started with this. There's the chestnut stuff. Chestnut. What do you call it? Stain. <laughs> Not a wood guy. Sorry. <laughs> I get it done basically, but that's about it. So anyway, so uh, anyway, I'll get this done and we'll go on from there. Talk to you later. Bye now.